Live from 2 News. This is Talkin' Real, powered by Strong Auto Group. Good evening and welcome to another edition of Talkin' Real on Talkin' Sports. Dunny, ourselves in the middle of a Wednesday-Saturday combo for the final time in the regular season. Yeah. We'll see what happens in the postseason, but in the regular season. And uh, it, everything's hanging in the balance. I finally caught my breath from last night. I mean, what, what an incredible game that was over the course of 90 plus four. And I think a lot of RSL fans should probably thank Emmanuel Boateng for taking his sweet time getting off the field because that substitution in particular added just one extra minute in the mind of Chris Penso, the referee. And that afforded Brito, opportunity, Brito Martinez that opportunity to score that goal. Let's take you to the highlights, show you what happened. RSL digging an early hole at home. Again, it's a familiar script. Conceding early, Giovanni Dos Santos. Great ball in behind Hamas and Olave. Perfectly weighted. Emmanuel Boateng buries it. Uh, no Aaron Mond, no Justin Glad, no Chris Schuler. So Chris Winger gets to start alongside Hamas and Olave. And sometimes when you get both your outside backs up high on the wings, if it's a soft turnover, uh, it's a dangerous opportunity. That's exactly what happened with a great ball from Dos Santos. A great finish from Emmanuel Boateng. That was the only goal in the first half. In the second half, the game really opened up. Critical play here. Brian Rowe, what are you doing? Well, you're taking down Juwal Plata, which is why Chris Pencil is pointing to the spot. Uh, for the model of consistency that Brian Rowe has been all season long in Major League Soccer, .89 goals against average, seven shutouts on the year. This was the first of two horrific mistakes by the LA goalkeeper. Plata steps up, buries the penalty, we're level of one. Uh, calm, cool, collected as the goalkeeper goes down. Plata just goes right down the heart of the goal. Classy, classy finish for Plata, who earns the penalty and then takes the penalty. We are only level for four minutes off the free kick. Fazio Husidic picks out Giovanni Dos Santos off Nick Ramonda's glove and in 2-1 LA. Well, you can tell right there that ball, number one, what a fantastic ball that is from Husidic. But with the high line and the perfectly timed run from Giovanni Dos Santos, he's in behind Hamasin Olave. It's the preferred left foot. And Nick Ramondo gets a strong hand to it, but just skips underneath him and harmlessly into the back of the net. 64th minute, Sebastian Legette on the ball for the Galaxy. Lost one to the far post. Headed down, the first shot off the bar, the second shot off the post and in. The well, Alan Gordon effect right here. He's put the ball back in a dangerous spot. Jeff Lorenowitz, the defensive midfielder, collapses right at the top of the six. He gets in front of Kyle Beckerman, pings it off the crossbar, but right place, right time, Giovanni Dos Santos gets his second of the match to make it 3-1 again. Gordo touch, Lorenowitz hits the crossbar, and Giovanni Dos Santos unmarked clinical finish from the Mexican international. 3-1. About 25 minutes or so to go. You can't blame RSL fans for thinking there was no hope. But here comes hope. Euro lays it off. Joao Plata scores. 3-2. There's hope. No, number one, the entry ball right here. Number two, the recognition of Euromov Sissian to open up his hips and caress that ball back into the path of Joao Plata. And watch the finish. That is first time. He torques his head down as he tries to keep his height over the ball. What a great goal that is for Joao Plata. Still 3-2. Four minutes of stoppage time. We're three minutes and 16 seconds in. Brito shot deflected and then under Brian Rowan in. There is not a goalkeeper in the world that should make this mistake. This is a half-hearted effort in terms of the pace behind the shot of Brito Martinez. It's taken two skips. You wonder if the first skip has offset the sightline of Brian Rowe. He's tagged it all the way through, but watch. It just skips right underneath him. Those are just soft hands. And again, Brian Rowe, that is the second of two horrific mistakes that he made on the road in Rio Tinto stadiums and then handbags at 50 paces against Jeff Lorenowitz and Javier Morales. That was the final kick of the game. Yeah. Uh, shades of Orlando, right? Now the RSL's on the other end of it, though. All right, here are the standings. RSL and the Galaxy draw, which probably good news in Texas, where FC Dallas is closing in on the supporter shield. Not there yet, but they got a seven-point cushion. Of course, that would get a berth in the CONCACAF Champions League. RSL and the Galaxy tied for second, but Colorado's only a point back. Rapids have two games in hand. Sporting KC and the Portland Timbers are trying to hold off San Jose and Seattle in the race for the final postseason berths. RSL's in Portland Saturday night, 8 o'clock here on KMYU, then back home to host Houston and FC Dallas. After a trip to San Jose, RSL closes the home schedule at home against Sporting Kansas City. And then the finale is in Seattle. 
Okay, you can visit fanpulse.kutv.com right now, and you can weigh in on this question, which, Dunny, you will answer immediately. You've had a day to think about it. Yep. Are you still basking in the glow of the dramatic finish and the, and the point that was saved, or thinking about how a depleted Galaxy roster denied RSL the full three at home? Uh, a little bit of both, to be quite honest with you. I, I think I choose C. Um, listen, I think when I look Making at this up team... your own question. I, I am. Your I'm going to make up my own answer. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm going to say C. Uh, here's why. I, I think sometimes you look at a team that struggles throughout the course of 90 minutes and yet figures out a way to even up the scoreline and get a result when things aren't going well. To me, psychologically, that is a huge step forward as we take another step towards the playoffs. Uh, you have to be able to figure out ways to get results in home and away series in the knockout rounds in the Western Conference playoffs. Now, the negative glass half full or glass half empty is the fact that this was really a poor, poor performance top to bottom from Real Salt Lake at home. Considering the LA Galaxy were without Robbie Keane, Yella Van Dam, Steven Gerrard, Jossie Zardes, and Nigel Young is no longer with the team. But... They did get somebody special today. Yes. This afternoon. And that brings us to this one. The LA Galaxy took this late collapse so hard that Landon Donovan came out of That's retirement. That's not true. That's probably not That's completely not true. true. That's not Man, true did it sound good? <laughs> <laughs> that sounded it great. great. Yeah. All right. He's been thinking about it for a while, long before that game. But still, the point is, he signed for the rest of the year. Yeah. He'll avail he'll be available Sunday against Orlando. So. How big an impact can he have? How big a difference maker can he be? I was just talking about this. This is huge for a lot of reasons. Number one, Landon Donovan is the most iconic player, U.S. player, U.S. born player in the history of Major League Soccer. I put him uh, alongside David Beckham of the two guys that are the only guys that realistically still sell Major League Soccer. Now, take all the off the field stuff on the field. I've played with Landon. I've known him since I was 15. I played with him on the Olympic team, on the national team. I ended my career with the LA Galaxy alongside of him. He is going to be so fit and so sharp, it will mask uh, the problem of being away from the game for 18 months. Uh, you put Landon Donovan on the right and replace him with Jossie Zardes. Uh, you put uh, Giovanni Dos Santos on the left, uh, Steven Gerrard, Robbie Keane. The reality is LA Galaxy is a counterattacking team. This makes them that much better. Uh, it strikes fear in any opponent that they will face. And much like I said in 2014 at the World Cup with Jurgen Klinsmann, if you have Landon Donovan available for the final 15 minutes, I don't care how fit he is, he changes the complexion of the game, right, wrong, or indifferent. Well, the Galaxy are someone else's problem, at least until the playoffs. The focus for RSL turns to Portland, where they're going to have their hands full with a couple of very talented players. Yeah, so let's talk about them. I mean, first and foremost, when you're talking about the Portland Timbers, there's realistically two players that you have to talk about. It's Diego Valeri, the number eight and Fernando Adi, the big number nine for the Portland Timbers. This was the red card for Hamas and Olave on the road early part in the year. You just see the presence. Fernando Adi, he's going to replicate RSL fans what we saw from Alan Gordon uh, the other night. Uh, then Adi from the spot. It was a good goal. It was a good result for the Portland Timbers at home. But it's not just Valeri, or excuse me, Fernando Adi. It's Diego Valeri in these secondary runs. He pops up in incredibly dangerous spots. And He's like Javier Morales where he pulls the strings, but he's much more like Burrito Martinez and Joao Plata in terms of his finishing when he's in the final third. And look at the technique. He comes across the ball, laces, absolutely nothing the goalkeeper can do about it. So when you're talking about the Portland Timbers and they're coming off a very disappointing result on the road in Dallas, uh, the leadership across the back line in front of Jake Gleason is going to be Liam Ridgewell. He has a new center back partner, uh, former Newcastle United defender Steven Taylor with Nat Borchers tearing his Achilles. He's out for the rest of the season. Will Zarek Valentin continue at right back, or will Alvis Powell come back from Jamaica and overtake that right back spot? Uh, some questions about Jack Barnby. I thought he was below average on the road at Dallas, but it's always going to be about these two. It's going to be about uh, Fernando Adi and Diego Valeri and how their individual and collective movement in front of both Darlington Nagby and Diego Chara start to look like. On the other side, for Real Salt Lake, uh, not a lot of changes, although I do have a question about this young man, Hamasin Olave. Uh, one of the toughest games that we've seen since his return from the New York Red Bulls. Uh, he really did struggle in this match, and uh, I do have some concerns with how MLS is going to look back on one or two altercations inside the box. I think Justin Glad gets the start, uh, Beltran on one side, Phillips on the other, and then everything goes back to normal. Burrito Martinez connected with both Javier Morales, Yermov Sissian, Plata on the other side. Kyle Beckerman, Luke Mullen. Uh, also, kind of interesting about should something happen with Hamas and Olave. What about Chris Schuler? What about Sonny? These are guys that could be major impact players on the road this weekend in Portland. 
All right, RSL and the Portland Timbers kicking off 8.30 Mountain Time in Oregon. Our coverage will start at 8 o'clock. Flip over after the BYU-Utah football game finishes or when you're sure your team is going to lose. There's no reason to suffer. That's right? a Just great point. Move on to the next game, point. right? With the international schedule, there was limited action in MLS last weekend, but the New England Revolution gave RSL a little help. Did they a favor. Did. Yeah, they did. I mean, listen, it's, it's a weird time right now when you're talking about Major League Soccer. Uh, the fact that the Colorado Rapids lost at Real Salt Lake 2-1 after getting that Skelsh and Gushy goal, and then they go to New England on the international break and they lose 2-0. Uh, I'm not sure what Colorado Rapids are made of as of right now. It's the first time they've uh, really faced this type of indecision with their starting 11. Uh, and this is off the backside, the LA Galaxy 2-1 winners against the Columbus Crew before last night's result. Key games coming up. Sporting Kansas City and Houston play Friday. Sporting Kansas City would like to get into the race for those top four spots. Got some work to do. And then, oh, look at that. That's some big dogs right there. FC Dallas and Colorado. Well, and for FC Dallas, two, three weeks ago probably it was, I said uh, that Sebastian Giovinco, TFC Toronto FC, would win the Supporters' Shield, win the Eastern Conference. That's no longer the case. FC Dallas with three points at home against Colorado, handing Colorado the third consecutive loss. Uh, FC Dallas could lock up the Supporters' Shield very quickly. All right, with a pair of blowouts, 6-0, 4-0, real blowouts. Uh, the USA is through to the hex in World Cup qualifying. Six teams now playing for three World Cup ber berths, and the fourth-place team has a playoff with a, uh, the fifth-place team from three and Asia. And yep, three yeah, and a half. so it's three and a half yep. spots. Uh, now, the U.S. hasn't missed the World Cup since 1986. Watching, and we're starting to see a little bit of turnover in the roster. Yeah. We're starting to see some young faces here. You think these young players are going to carry the U.S. through, not just now, but... It's the core of a team that can Ooh. do it going forward. Um, two things. One, I think what we saw through Copa Centenario was that Jurgen Klinsmann figured out a formation in a tournament format, yet this isn't a tournament format. This is a qualification format. Uh, I think he gets away from the 4-3-3. I think he goes to a more natural 4-4-2. Questions about Clint Dempsey, Jossie Zardes will hamper the qualification process, um, but I do agree. I think what we've seen from Christian Pulisic, uh, nothing short of phenomenal. This kid has to be an absolute starter. Mark it down, he's the first, Christian Pulisic at 17 years of age, will be the first American-born player to go for $40 million, euros, pounds, whatever you want to call it, at some point. He is that good. Uh, I think the other couple players to keep an eye on, DeAndre Yedlin, John Brooks, uh, Kellen Acosta at left back, and will Jurgen finally settle on a goalkeeper, or will we go back and forth between Brad Guzan and Timmy Howard? It's going to get nervous. We're going to lose some games. Social media is going to be in an uproar but it'll be fun to watch, and I think ultimately they qualify. Yeah, you did all that. Jordan Morris, Bobby Wood. I mean, there's Who? a lot of... What? Did you say Jordan Morris? What? That? There's a lot of... I don't of even remember that name anymore. <laughs> I like Bobby Wood, though. You moved on. Yeah. All right, remember to follow us on social media. Dunny's on Twitter and Instagram at Brian Dunseth, and on Facebook at Brian Dunseth one I'm on Twitter and Facebook at David DJ James. All right, talking RSL. We're here every Thursday night. We will see you Saturday in Portland.